Welcome back. In this video, you'll learn about working with plan styles to format the plan view of pipe networks in your InfraWizard project. I'll click the Plan Styles button to open the list of available plan styles in my project. Here, I can edit any style by double clicking its name or using the Edit button. And I can duplicate or delete any of them as well. There are only two basic styles that cannot be deleted, which are Standard Gravity and Standard Pressure but you can modify their settings like any other style. The export and import options here allow you to exchange styles between projects. If I click export, I can select the styles to be exported and save them to an INW file, which can be imported to another project. Now let's take a quick tour of the plan style settings. The plan style settings are divided into three tabs. The first one is for general settings, and the other two are for the pipe and node annotations. In the General tab, you'll find the style name, then the leader settings which control the format of the multi-leader objects used in node annotations and backdrop annotations. Here you can select the multi-leader styles to be used, and you have an option to show a leader line in the node annotations. I'll click it here. Click OK. Now you see that node annotations have a leader line. If I move one of them right now, you'll notice that the leader line remains pointing to the node center. The multi-leader objects have several nice options for formatting the annotation's appearance. You can, for example, frame the annotation text. And you can edit the multi-leader style itself to modify its general format, which applies to all annotations. I'm changing the arrowhead symbol here, for example. Back to our plan style. Let's explore the text settings, which also affect the annotations of pipes and nodes. Here we select the text style to be applied, then the text height, and finally the spacing to height ratio, which controls the line spacing between the components of an annotation. I'll increase it to 3 as a test. You can see how the spacing between annotation lines has increased. The pipe settings affect the appearance of pipe elements. You can select to show the direction arrow of the pipe and specify the arrow size here. Direction arrows are commonly shown in gravity networks to indicate the flow direction from the upstream end to the downstream end of the pipe. But one thing to bear in mind is that InfraWizard shows the direction arrows based on the assigned start node and end node of the pipe and not the pipe levels. So, if I change the pipe levels here, for example, you'll notice that the pipe direction is not affected. If I want to reverse the pipe direction to be from manhole MHK63 to manhole MHK64, I should switch the assignment of start node and end node of the pipe using the reverse pipe command. Now it's showing the new direction. And if I open the pipe properties, you'll see that MHK63 is now assigned as the start node, and MHK64 became the end node. The other component of pipe settings is about the pipe thickness. You can check this box to give the pipe object a thickness equal to the inner width or the outer width of the conduit section. Let's select outer width. You can see that all pipe objects now have thickness. This thickness is equal to the outer diameter of the pipe you see in the pipe properties. And if I change the diameter of this pipe, you'll notice that the pipe thickness is directly updated. Changing the number of cells of a pipe also affects the object thickness, because InfraWizard shows the overall outer width of the conduit. Now we reach the Pipe Annotation tab. You have here two lists of annotation components, one for the available components that are currently undisplayed, and the other is for the currently displayed components. 
Each component represents a certain property of the pipe element, like start invert, end invert, length, slope, etc. You can move components between the two lists using these arrows or by double-clicking the component name. And using the up and down arrows, you can rearrange the order of the displayed components. Selecting any component in the list of displayed annotations allows you to set its format through this panel. You can set a prefix and a suffix to be displayed with the annotation value, and here you can modify the numerical format of the text. Here you find a component called Backdrop Annotation that is a bit different from the others. It is not actually displayed within the annotation block of every pipe, but keeping it in the displayed annotations list makes it appear where there is a backdrop connection to any manhole. It looks like this one. It points to the downstream end of the pipe just before the manhole where the backdrop connection should exist. The annotation text includes the type of backdrop and the invert level of the lower pipe of the backdrop. If you need to remember how backdrop connections are evaluated in InfraWizard, you can watch part 10 video of this tutorial series again. The same approach of working with pipe annotations applies to the node annotations. We have components for name, ground level, invert level, etc. We can select which components are displayed, modify their order, and set the format of each one. Finally, let me remind you that to assign a plan style to a network, you should do this here in the Manage Networks panel. You can assign any plan style to any network regardless of its type. And you can make an assignment to multiple networks using this context menu. That's everything you need to know about plan styles. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.